What's up my stats artists? Let's talk about the free response question that's going to be on this year's AP Statistics exam that covers collecting data. Now, this problem is typically the second question on the exam, at least it has been the last couple years. Now, here's the deal. This question is either gonna deal with an experiment or collecting data. Now, if it's an experiment, you gotta make sure you know all the teeny, teeny, tiny details of the experiment. The experimental units, the treatments, the response variable, uh, use of a placebo, use of a control group, and don't forget the four main pillars of experimental design. You gotta have comparison. There's gotta be at least two treatment groups or more. You gotta have randomization. Who gets what treatment has got to be done randomly. You gotta know about replication. The idea that the more subjects in the experiment, the better for your effect size, and completely redoing the experiment again to show similar results. And the fourth thing is control. You wanna make sure that the two groups or more groups are treated as similar as possible. We want those groups to be very, 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 very similar other than the treatment we give them. Now understand that similar doesn't mean that they're all boys that are 14 years old. No, similar means that we want everybody in each group to be, well, a representation of the population that we're trying to learn about. Now, that means that we want that group to be a nice mix of everything, but that means we also want the other groups to also be a nice mix of everything. That way they're very different inside, but very similar between. The only difference is what treatment we're going to give them. Now, all of those details are super important to know for an experiment, but just make sure that when you're talking about an experiment, you're speaking in context. Always relate back to the problem being asked. Now, another important thing about experiments is understanding this. Why or how do we do the random assignment? Keep it simple. If you've got 60 subjects, you're trying to split them into two groups, give every subject a number, zero, one through 60, use a random number generator, ignore repeats, ignore numbers nobody has, and then use that random number generator to pick 30 numbers. Those 30 corresponding people will get treatment one, the remaining will get treatment two. Don't overdo this question, try to think outside the box and come up with some crazy scheme. Now the final detail that you should know about experimental design are the three different designs. A completely randomized design is where we just have a complete randomization determine who goes into which group. Again, making those groups very different inside, which means they're very similar between. The second is a block design. This is if there's another variable that we think is just way too important to just leave up to chance. So let's say diet for our experiment just matters too much. Diet's definitely going to affect the response variable. Again, we block on a variable that we really think is gonna affect that response variable. So then we create blocks. One block of people that might not exercise, moderate exercise, exercise a lot. In each block, we do a separate mini experiment giving out all treatments randomly, of course. Now this allows for our treatment groups to have a nice mix of all different exercise habits. That way, as I've already said, in that treatment group, we got a nice mix. And in the other treatment group, we got a nice mix. Now, the third type of design is a matched pair design. This is where we pair two people together that have lots of things in common. Then in each pair, one gets the first treatment, one gets the second treatment, and that again has to be done randomly. You could also pair people up with themselves in extreme situations, but you just gotta be very, very careful. For example, if I'm gonna do something with lotion, the two arms that are most similar in this world are these two. Flip a coin, one gets treatment one, one gets treatment two, and that way I'm really controlling a lot of other variables. But know all the details of experimental design for that question. Now, the second route that this FRQ question could go is dealing with collecting data. So here you wanna make sure you know a couple things, the different collecting data techniques, simple random, stratified, cluster, systematic. But you also wanna make sure you know the bad ones as well, because they might be asking about those, using volunteers or using something out of convenience. Then you gotta know all the different ways you could be biased. Selection bias is anything that you do that makes the sample bad under coverage, over coverage, those types of things. But then we also have response bias, which means you might have the best sample in the world, but the responses you get are untruthful for whatever reason. Maybe it's the wording of the question, maybe it's the person asking the questions, maybe it's the environment that it's in, or all those different kinds of things, or maybe it's just a broken measuring device. But the more you understand all those tiny details, the better you're gonna do on this question, but make sure you're right, and you write in context, full complete sentences, that's gonna give you the best chance to get the FRQ about collecting data fully correct.